What actually is biogas? Well, as its name suggests, it's a biologically produced gas. An example of this is the action of bacteria on sewage, resulting in the production of methane. Now, whilst under some circumstances this can be inconvenient or even dangerous, in others it can be a useful way of producing substantial amounts of fuel from what otherwise might be waste material. Looking at what is normally the negative side of this production, which comes in the disposal of household waste. Traditionally, this contains substantial amounts of organic matter, anything from food that's gone past its use-by date, vegetable peelings, waste to burned or otherwise inedible food. One common method of disposing of this household waste is in landfills. It isn't immediately put into a hole in the ground and covered over. First, it goes a period where it's spread around and compacted. During this time, any oxygen in the compacted waste is soon used up by aerobic bacteria, in turn producing methane, but also quite a lot of carbon dioxide. Now, the removal of the existing oxygen and the compacting nature of the waste means that very little new oxygen makes it into the waste later on, which in turn means that the anaerobic bacteria now dominate the process of breaking down the organic material. As this change from aerobic to anaerobic action takes place, the proportion of carbon dioxide produced reduces and the methane increases. When combined with the compacted and sealed nature of the landfill, this means that large amounts of methane become trapped inside the dump until it manages to force its way out through a weak spot. Such an uncontrolled leak a flammable gas course can be fairly dangerous, especially when it may contain hydrogen and other gases along with the methane. This is why in well-controlled landfills we take steps to mitigate or deal with this problem. Now, the gas can be captured by drilling or placing a PVC pipe with holes in it vertically into the top of the landfill to allow the gas to enter into the pipe and flow upwards in a controlled manner. This gas can then be either flared off or burnt to prevent causing a risk to local inhabitants or it can be used to power a turbine to generate electricity. However, because of high levels of carbon dioxide and other issues, this can be an expensive way of producing electricity. Now the other methods of production of biogas which are normally considered positive methods, those can be sources that nearly are 100% organic matter. This can be things like human and animal faeces. Processing sewage plants and digesters on farms basically works in a similar way and actually has very similar outputs. The output of methane from these plants is significantly higher as a percentage of the gases than those produced from a landfill. However, it still has a significant amount of impurities so it can't be used directly without either upgrading or purification in things like gas-powered transport. Ports. The production has been widespread in Asia for decades and now more farms and sewage plants in the West are making use of this method of treatment. Previously, waste treatment is either limited or very expensive. Farm use of animal waste or slurry was generally to spread it back onto the land with little or no treatment. This could taint crops it was spread on, produce significant odour, could pollute nearby water courses and actually quite a little of the nutrients in the slurry could actually be absorbed by the crops themselves. When the slurry goes through a digester, as well as producing substantial amounts of methane, all of these other factors are vastly improved. Whilst the economical benefits of the process might not be viable as a whole, when combined with gas production they certainly become so. Unfortunately, the advantages of this method are sometimes overlooked by some farmers and certainly by banks who are unwilling to loan to farmers money for processes that they don't fully understand. The treatment itself involves the use of bacteria in several stages of anaerobic digestion. These are called archaea. Each type of bacteria completes part of the process and then another bacteria takes over until the process is actually complete. It's generally viewed as a single process but it goes through hydrolysis, acidogenesis, acetogenesis, and finally methanogenesis. The major difference in human waste treatment is to whether the biogas is produced aerobically or anaerobically. Anaerobic treatment does take longer, which produce a greater amount of methane. So things like space, 
time and the need for energy production we determine the matter as to whether it's aerobic or anaerobic that's used. That's the introduction to the production of biogas.